Say hello, I'm Abun and James. Father James Doran of the Maronite Eparchy of Brooklyn, New York, our Eastern Eparchy here in the United States. The question has been asked why we use Aramaic as a liturgical language for the Maronite tradition. Of course, this is an excellent question, as for most part in the West, we're surrounded by the Roman Catholic Church, who uses Latin, and used Latin more or less exclusively up until recent times. And so also the Aramaic tradition coming out of Antioch. The question is complex to two different degrees. One, that Aramaic is a very ancient civilization, predating our Lord even by a couple thousand years. And the other important question is, is that we are all members of the Church of Antioch. And it's important to understand that Antioch was a Greek colony established by, after the time of, just after Alexander the Great, bringing in Athenians and Macedonian soldiers to establish. And therefore, for the next three centuries, up until the time of our Lord and then onward, the civic life, the urban life, the cultural life was all Greek. But of course, the place where this colony was established, which became the great city of Antioch, was Aramea. Aramea, through antiquity, is roughly the areas that we now identify as Jordan, Israel, Palestine, Lebanon, Syria, southern Turkey, and much of the, much of the part of Mesopotamia in modern-day Iraq. These people for thousands of years spoke Aramean, which was a kind of a grouping of dialects that we form the language we call Aramaic. Throughout centuries of political changes, of empires, kingdoms, movement, the language of Aramaea still remained. And even when the Aramaic people themselves were subject to foreign powers, say for example with Persia, Aramaea became, Aramaic became the language of commerce and even of politics in some instances. For this reason, it had a long life to it. And in fact, with the coming of our Lord, he would have spoken Aramaic, a dialect of Aramaic, in Jerusalem and Galilee during his life here, as preaching the gospel. Because of this importance, the Christian city of Antioch, being the first place where the Christians established themselves during the persecutions which follow Pentecost, we have the simultaneity of an Aramaic people, a Greek people, a cultural language of Greek, and an Aramaic-speaking peasantry all around the outside of the city. For this reason, out of the once one, we can say, matriarchal mother church of Antioch, we have both the Greek traditions that come out, that we often refer to now as being Byzantine, established finally and canonically could say permanently out of Constantinople, and of course the Aramaic traditions that come also out of Antioch. Now the importance is to remember that since Greek was the language of culture, civilization, the, uh, and commerce out of Antioch, Aramaic and the people that spoke Aramaic primarily, especially the, the peasant population around the outside, the farmers, the small village, the small village dwellers and that, they spoke Aramaic, and to some extent they were marginalized, not by any intent or purpose to send them away, but by the mere fact of the cultural distinction that took place. And therefore, as Christianity spread throughout the Middle East, especially in the cities of Edessa, and Nisibis, and Tessaphon, it was quite natural for the Aramaic-speaking population of those areas to turn towards those cities for their spiritual sustenance, we could say. And so, especially in the fourth century with the writings and the poetry, the theological writings of St. Ephraim, declared a doctor of the church in 1920, the writings of St. Ephraim and his poetry became very much a focal point of the Aramaic population. And therefore, as the importance of Edessa and Nisibis grew in those eastern regions, Aramaic took on a greater importance for the people for whom the liturgy would have been in Greek from the beginning, as it was also even for the Roman church in Greek from the beginning. And for that reason, by the 4th century, the 5th century, Aramaic started to be taken as the translation being used for the liturgy and therefore becoming the liturgical language of this area of the world. 
And so by the 5th century, the liturgy throughout the areas outside of Antioch in the Middle East became primarily Syriac. Syriac is the specific dialect of Aramaean coming out of Edessa. And the great importance of the writings of St. Ephraim and later on of St. Jacob of Sarug, that language became established as being the, the normal dialect which would be used for religious purposes in the liturgy. And hence, by the 5th century, Syriac dialect became the foundation of many of the churches that we have today, not just simply the Maronite Catholic Church, but also the Syrian Catholic Church, the Syriac Orthodox Church, and in India also the Malankaris, the Malabara, the Syriac Orthodox in India, and of course the Church of the East, or the Assyrian Church, or the Church of Persia once was called. Aramaic always remains then fundamentally for them their liturgical language. So, if you have the occasion, go to a Maronite church near you, go to a Syrian Catholic church, a Syriac Orthodox also, they use much more extensively at times the Syriac language, and experience the liturgical language for yourself, and in hearing it, understanding that the language that you're listening to in the liturgy was once spoken by our God and Savior Jesus Christ in Jerusalem and in Galilee.